The story is told in flashbacks set during a 1945 testimony that William Moulton Marston gives to representatives of the Child Study Association of America. In 1928, William and his wife Elizabeth taught and worked on their research at the associated Harvard and Radcliffe Colleges. One day, William hires one of his students, Olive Byrne as a research assistant. Olive aids in the Marston's work in inventing the lie detector, and researching William's disc theory on human interactions and the three soon grow close. One after another, tests by the lie detector reveal that they have fallen in love with one another, and all three of them begin to engage in a polyamorous relationship. As word about their unconventional relationship gets out, the Marstons are fired from the university. Olive reveals she is pregnant and moves in with the Marstons shortly after. The trio decides to build a family together and create a fabrication to keep the nature of their relationship secret. The family settles in a New York suburb, happily together. By 1934, Elizabeth and Olive bear children. Olive has two sons and Elizabeth has one son and one daughter. William tells the neighbors that Olive is a widow and taken in by the Marstons. William starts trying to make a living as an author. Elizabeth becomes a secretary and becomes the family's primary breadwinner. Olive stays home and cares for the kids, occasionally submitting her writing samples to publishers. They raise their four children together, and Elizabeth names her daughter after Olive. In 1940, William stumbled upon a lingerie shop in New York City run by Charles Guyette, who introduced him to fetish art-themed comics and photos. The art captures William's imagination as a demonstration of his disc theory. Elizabeth initially disapproves of the art, but she relents during a presentation wherein Olive tries out an outfit that later would be the prototype for Wonder Woman's costume. After finding limited work as a writer, Marston proposes creating a female Amazonian superheroine for a comic book. The comic would feature his ideas on disc theory, drawing inspiration from the Marston's work on the lie detector and Elizabeth and Olive in real life, and intend to support the feminist movement to further equal rights for women through a populist medium. He pitches his ideas to Max Gaines, a publisher at National Periodical Publications, who ultimately accepts the comic and suggests simplifying the female superhero's name to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is an instant hit, leading to prosperity for the Marston's family. However, one day, their neighbor wanders into their home and witnesses them making love. This incident led to their children getting bullied and asked to leave school by the staff. Worried about their children being attacked and ostracized and thinking they have no choice, Elizabeth reluctantly demands that Olive leave the household with her children. At the same time, the Wonder Woman comic receives accusations of featuring overtly sexual sadomasochistic and lesbian imagery, which leads to the testimony of the present day. Leaving the testimony, William collapses and is rushed to the hospital. Learning that he is dying of cancer, William asks Olive to see him and Elizabeth again, trying to help them reconcile. William persuades Elizabeth to submit to Olive as she should not always dominate their relationship. The Marstons get on their knees and beg for Olive's forgiveness. Elizabeth tearfully admits that she cannot live without Olive and eventually agrees to return to them. The epilogue text reveals that William died in 1947. Elizabeth and Olive lived together as a couple for another 38 years until Olive died in 1985, and Elizabeth lived to be 100. It also notes that sexual imagery disappeared from the Wonder Woman comic after William's death. However, she kept her powers and had conventional superhero adventures. In 1970 she was subject to a reboot and lost her superpowers. She became a crime fighter and boutique owner. Famous activist Gloria Steinem reclaimed the character in 1972, when she put Wonder Woman on the cover of the first issue of Ms. Magazine, as the quintessential symbol of female empowerment.